Hi players, bonjour from Paris, my name is Asaf Hirsch and welcome to my channel Easy Board Games. Today I'm going to show you how to play the game Tales of Realms and Ruins that was designed and illustrated by Mikhail Iliev. Now, the components that you're going to see here are probably going to be different than the components that you will see in the final version since this is a prototype and Tales of Realms and Ruins will come out to GameFound around the second quarter of 2024. Ready to see how to play this game? Let's go to setup. Alright guys, so in order to set up the board, we'll need to assemble the three parts of it. So make sure that in clockwise order, you're going to have the village, the magic realm and the castle. And pay attention that we're going to put it on the healthy side and not on the destroyed side that we can see on the other side of it. Then we'll need to form the different offer decks that are going to be around the board. So first of all, we'll need to separate the different cards of the three locations. Here, for example, we're going to have 12 cards with this red suit that we can see right over here. So we will need to shuffle this deck. Then we'll need to separate it into two equal decks. So we're going to have six cards in each deck. And we're going to place it face down next to a, the corresponding realm. In this case, this is the magic realm. Then we will flip facing up the first card from each deck. The 12 yellow cards will go right here next to the village and the blue cards will go right over here next to the castle. Then we'll need to put the cost markers in the respective place. So for example, this marker, the four gold, will come right here next to the village. This will be the starting point. Then we'll have the one follower marker goes next to the castle. And the last one, the two cards, will go next to the magic realm. Then we're going to place the three heroes in the respective place. So the blue hero will go to the castle, the yellow hero will go to the village, and the red hero will go to the magic realm. Now each player is going to choose which hero they would like to play and they're going to take the following. First of all, they're going to take their player board. So for the magic realm, for example, we're going to have the sorceress and we're going to place it in one of the locations adjacent to that realm. It doesn't really matter where. So let's say that the sorceress will be right over here. Underneath that player board, we're going to take the hero card that is corresponding to the same hero and we're going to tuck it under that player board in the designated place, just like this. Then they're going to take their 15 followers and create a supply right next to their board. Also, they're going to take a guide card and place it next to their board. Then they're going to take their six starting cards that we can identify by the name that we can see at the bottom of the card that is stated Sorceress Starting Card. Those six cards we're going to shuffle and we're going to draw three cards into the hand of that player. The rest of the three cards we can put right next to the player board. After that, we'll need to shuffle all the event cards and we're going to place them in a place that is accessible to all the players next to the board. Then we're going to create two supplies. One of them is the different coins and we have here three values of one, two and three. And we're going to create another supply of the event markers and the other ciders so that we're going to talk about them a little bit later. Then we'll need to randomly decide who's going to be the starting player. In our case, it's going to be the yellow player who's playing the villager. In Tales of Realms and Ruins, starting from the first player and going clockwise, each player is going to do up to two actions. The first possible action will be to play a card from their hand. The second option will be to buy a card from one of the offer decks. The third action is to use a realm effect. And the fourth action will be to train their own hero. The game is going to continue round after round until one of the three conditions have met and then the game will stop immediately. If at the beginning of a turn that specific player is controlling all of the three kingdoms, the game immediately stops and that player has won. If at some point of the game one of the offering decks will be depleted, the game will end immediately and the winner will be decided according to that specific suit of the offering deck that was just depleted. In this example, since it was one of the village offering decks that was depleted, the player with the most gold in his uh, possession will win the game. If it is one of the castle's offering decks that will be depleted, you win if the total number of followers that you have in all three realms is higher than any one of the other players. And if it will be one of the magic realms offering decks that will be depleted, you're going to win if the total number of cards that you're having in your hand, drawing deck and your discard pile is higher than any one of the other players. 
if at any point we're going to have a tie in one of the winning conditions, we're going to continue to the next clockwise winning condition. If again we're going to have a tie, we're going to continue to the third one. And if again we're going to have a tie, the winner will be the last player who bought a card from one of the offering decks. That pretty much means that the player who triggered uh, this end game. The third option for ending the game immediately is if all of the realms will become ruined. That means that we flipped all of the three realms to the other side, to their uh, destroyed side. In this case, the other siders have won the game and all of the other players have lost. So let's start by talking about all the different actions that each player will be able to take, starting with the first action, which is to play a card from your hand. And this is an action that each hero will be able to take up to two times in their turn. When we want to play a card, we'll need to choose one from our hand, we'll need to pay its cost if there is one, and then take the action that is written. Let's say that the red player, the sorceress, would like to play one of the cards that she has in her hands. She will not be able to play the recruit card since she doesn't have any gold. So she will not be able to pay one gold in order to do that specific action. On the other hand, she will be able to play the venture card. In this case, for example, it will be to win one gold. So she will take one gold from the general supply and will put it in her possession. After she played the card, we're going to put this card right next to the draw deck. And like this, we're going to form the discard pile. Just to give one more example, after she played this card, now that she has one gold in her possession, she will be able to use this card that is called Recruit in order to pay one gold and gain one follower. So she's going to pay this one gold back to the supply. She's going to take one of the followers that she has in her own supply and she's going to put this follower in any realm that she would like. So she decided to put this follower in the magic realm just like this. Then the card that she just played is going to go to the discard pile. At the end of her turn, she's going to draw cards to her hand limit. Now at the beginning of the game, all of the players have the hand limit of three cards. So the sorceress is going to draw one and two cards in order for her to have three cards again in her hand. If at some point one of the players needs to draw cards and they don't have any more in their draw pile, they're simply going to flip their discard pile. Pay attention, flip and not shuffle and they're going to continue draw up to their hand limit. If during a player's turn they have in their hand their hand limit or even surpass that, no need to discard cards, you're just going to have that amount of cards in your next turn. Pay attention that during the game no player will be able to look in other player's decks and the only exception to that is that you can look at the most bottom card that you have in your draw deck. Also, no player is allowed to look in the discard pile of themselves or of the other players. What you can do, which is of course, is just to see the last card that is visible on the discard pile of the other players. The next action that we'll be able to do is to buy a card. Now you will be able to buy one of the two visible cards that you have in the offering decks, but only from the realm that your hero is situated. So if for example now it's the blue player's turn, he will be able to buy only one of these two cards that are available right over here. The cost of the cards depends on the cost marker that we can see right now next to the offering decks. So starting from the village, it is very straightforward. You need to pay four gold in order to buy one of the cards. In order to buy a card from the Magic Realm, you'll need to choose two cards from your hand that have the same suit. That means two yellow cards, two blue cards, or two red cards. One of them you will need to discard and the other one you will need to remove from the game. So this is one of the ways that each player will be able to alternate a, their deck of cards. And over here with this cost marker, you will need to discard back to your supply one of the followers in a realm that your hero is situated. When you're buying a card, it will not go to your hands directly. It will go facing up to the top of your discard pile. So after you have paid the cost and you took one of the cards, pay attention not to immediately flip the next card. Continue your turn and only after you have finished everything, including drawing cards if you needed to, right before you're passing the turn to the next player, only then flip the next card. Now, when you're flipping the next card, you will need to resolve whatever we see at the bottom of the card. Now we have three options. 
The first option is what we can see over here, and that means that we will need to add one other cider to a, one of the realms according to our choosing. That means that just for this example, let's say that the blue player has a, just bought the card over here from the Magic Realm and revealed this card right over here. He will need to take one of the uh, other ciders and put it in one of the realms. So right now we can see that the red player is controlling the Magic Realm. We can see that because the red player has one follower in this realm. The different heroes don't add to the count of the followers when we need to calculate who's controlling a realm. So right now, the castle and the village are not being controlled by any other player. When we have a situation when the other siders are controlling one of the realms, immediately we will need to do a few things. First of all, we will need to flip this realm to the other side, to its destroyed side. And we will see the effects of it a little bit later. Now, if we would have had different followers from the different players, those followers unfortunately are going to die and we're going to put them back in their respective supply of the different players. So the only things that are going to stay on that uh, part of the board, if we're going to have a situation that the other siders are now controlling this realm, are just the heroes that were situated on this place. The second symbol that we can have is the same as the first one, but we're going to add two other ciders to one of the healthy realms. That means that we will not be able to split them up, we'll have to put them in the same realm. Now pay attention that when we're adding other ciders as an effect from a card that we revealed, we'll have to put them in a healthy realm. We will not be able to put them in an already destroyed realm. On the other hand, when we're using the Conspire card, for example, and we'll have the effect of adding one other cider. In that case, we'll be able to add this other cider into any realm that we wish to, even if it's an already destroyed realm. The third possible sign that we have is the event sign. Now, when we reveal this event sign, that specific player will be considered as the decision maker. The realm where it was triggered will be considered as the event realm. And then the decision maker will have to take the first card that we can see in the event card. Then we're going to have a certain text on the card, some flavor text, and at the bottom, we can see that we have something that is called go to, and then a specific number. Now the decision maker will appoint one of the other players to be the storyteller. So at that time, the storyteller will take this booklet that we have over here that is called the event book, and we will open it in that specific event. In our case, it's going to be number 33. So just for the example, the storyteller, that means another player that the decision maker has appointed, will read the text that we have. A skin-changing sorceress from the other side is kidnapping the people of our kingdom. The seer asks for your help to capture the other sider. Now we're going to have a choice. Would you like to help the seer or would you refuse her? So the storyteller is going to read this to the decision maker and the decision maker will have to choose one of the two options. If they would like to help the seer, of course, they will go to event number 118. And if they would like to refuse her, they will go to event number 127. So the storyteller, after hearing the decision of the decision maker, will go to that specific event in the event book and will read what are the consequences of that specific decision. Sometimes it's going to be something that will be related only to the decision maker. Sometimes it's going to be something that involves all the other players. The next action that we can do is to use the effect of a realm. So a player will be able to use a realm effect a once per turn for each realm that they control. And each player can do this only one time per realm that they control. That means that if, for the example, the yellow player is now controlling the village and the magic realm, right? Here he has one follower against zero and here two followers against only one of the red player. He will be able to use the realm effect of the village and then the realm effect of the magic realm. That will be considered as two different actions. Now the realm effect depends if it's on the healthy side or on the destroyed side. In the village, for example, if you control it, you'll be able to take three gold from the supply. If the village was on the destroyed side and you control it, you'll be able to steal one gold from one of the other players. 
For the castle, if it was on the healthy side, which is not right now, right? This is on the destroyed side. You'll be able to switch between the two uh, cost markers of your choosing. Since the castle is on the ruined side, you'll be able to remove one of the followers and it doesn't matter if it belongs to another player or if it will be one of the other siders. Of course, in order to do that, we'll need to control this realm. So it's only in the case that we have, for example, six followers, since the other siders right now have five followers over here. And for the magic realm, when it's on the healthy side, you'll be able to draw two cards from your drawing deck. If it was on the destroyed side, you will need to choose one player, discard one of their cards from their hand randomly, and then you will be able to draw one card from your drawing deck. The last action that each player will be able to do is to train their own hero. Now this is an action that you'll be able to take up to two times in your turn. When you want to train your hero, you will need to discard two cards from your hand into your discard pile, and then you will need to take one of the followers from your supply, and you will need to put it on one of the available places on your uh, hero's board. Now pay attention that you're going to start from the bottom part of the hero's uh, board, and you're going to work your way up. So if, for example, the yellow player is going to do the first upgrade, they're going to take one of the followers from their supply, and they're going to put it right over here. Now, the first upgrade will be something that is similar to all the other heroes, but later it will change from one hero to another. So the first thing that you will be able to do is to take the hero's card that we have placed underneath uh, the hero's player board at the beginning of setup, and you're going to put this card at the top of the discard pile. Now it will be a good time to say that the components are limited in this game. That means that if you don't have any more followers in your supply, we will not be able to, of course, put them on different places on the board. And of course, you will not be able to continue training your hero. Now, after we have unlocked the first ability of the villager, we'll be able to continue to the two other abilities that right now are open to us. Now pay attention that you're going to learn that specific ability only after all of the places uh, of the followers have been filled. So here, for example, we can see that there is only one place for a follower. So we're going to put it right over here. But to the right side, we can see that we have two of these places. So only after we're going to train our hero two times and we're going to place two of these uh, follower cubes right over here, only then this ability will be available to us. Now the other siders, as we have seen before, are here to destroy the different realms that we have. Now, even though you can control a realm, even though it is destroyed, right? Just like the blue player is controlling the castle right now. If at some point we're reaching a situation that there are no other siders on that specific realm, for example, on the castle, and let's say that we have different followers from different players, only in this case, we will be able to flip again this specific realm to its healthy side. Now pay attention that if this realm is destroyed and we have even one other sider in that specific realm, we will not be able to flip it to the healthy side. Only when there are no other siders at all. Now when we're going to flip it to the healthy side, we're going to keep all the followers that were on this realm. Not like uh, the other situation that we have seen, that when we're flipping the board from the healthy side to the destroyed side, and in that case, all the followers are going to die.